I think the joy of art is trying to convey what you perceive so that other people will perceive it more or less the same way. Art is a form of seduction. I mean, there are rapists in the intellectual world. They become politicians. The seducers become artists. We try to seduce people into our reality tunnels of leading them there with a gun. But we are trying to get them into our reality. Our reality tunnel or our reality labyrinth, or whichever it is. In my case, it's a reality labyrinth. Bob is a wise man, and uh, that's the way he is in person, and that's the way he is in his writings, and that's the way he is on stage. At events where Bob was a speaker, and I've just seen people come up to him and, and be grateful to him for um, having awakened them. I think he has served the purpose of uh, being an alarm clock for people's psyches, and, and uh, they appreciate that because uh, the whole culture seems to be aimed at, at lulling them to sleep. And so um, a human alarm clock is a very welcome sound and sight. When I call the universe infinite, I do not assume it is infinite in space-time, but it has infinite aspects, which means that anybody who looks at it will see something different than anybody else who looks at it. And if you come back a day later and look at it again, it will still be different. William Blake said that you could see infinity in a grain of sand. And you can if you're, if you're open enough. Everything that gets into your brain affects your reality tunnel, your worldview, or your belief system, which I abbreviate BS. The, the, two, the, the, the three major things I've been trying to teach in all of my books is never believe fully in anybody else's BS. I don't care if it's Roger Nish, the Pope, L. Ron Hubbard, George Bush, or I don't care who it is. Don't, don't, don't swallow all their belief system totally. Don't, don't accept all of their bullshit, They're all their BS. The second rule is like unto the first. Don't believe totally in your own BS. Which means that, as Bucky Fuller said, the universe consists of non-simultaneously apprehended events. And we're using it is, unfortunately. Universe is non-simultaneously apprehended. What? Non simultaneously. Universe is non simultaneously apprehended. What? The universe consists of non simultaneously apprehended events, which means any belief system or reality tunnel you've got right now is going to have to be revised and updated as you continue to apprehend new events non later in time, not simultaneously. You can't apprehend, you can't comprehend, you can't perceive, you can't understand the whole universe at once. That requires some thought and some repetition. The universe is non simultaneously apprehended. As we go through our lives minute by minute, second by second, day by day, we're never perceiving the same universe that we perceive. If we are, it's because we stop paying attention. That's why you get bored, you're not paying attention. We can't apprehend the whole universe right now, the past, present, and future, and all, all space, time. How it takes nine years for signals to get here from Sirius, even. Think how long it would take to get here from the other end of the, from the furthest galaxy. So, you know, in terms of general relativity, it's not the same time everywhere. So the universe is not simultaneously apprehended. But that means our knowledge at any particular time is knowledge of part of the universe. Tomorrow we'll know more. Maybe not much more. Maybe a lot more. Who knows? I might turn on CNN tomorrow morning and find the greatest scientific discovery of the last five million years has just been announced. Now, who knows? And then again, it may take 20 years for the breakthrough of that magnitude, but scenario universe is non-simultaneously non apprehended, which is why we need maybe logic. Our maps of the universe, our ideas should be changing all the time, too. People who claim I've got the truth just don't realize. They think they comprehend the whole universe simultaneously. It can't be done. All they comprehended is part of it. They haven't comprehended everything up to date either because most of them don't know everything that happens up to date. I don't know everything that happens up until this date. And the people who are most sure of themselves know even less than I do in most cases, which, is, which means they're really dumb. 
This is the natural functioning of the human brain. It's the way children's brains perform before they're wrecked by the school system. It's the way the minds of all great scientists and artists work. But once you have a belief system, everything that comes in either gets ignored if it doesn't fit the belief system or it gets distorted enough so that it can fit into the belief system. You gotta be continually revising your map of the world or you'll lose more and more contact with reality. Anybody who has a belief system which covers the whole universe, that would be the Roman Catholics, Orthodox Islam, the Scientologists, Psychop, the Marxists, the Objectivists, and most of the assholes you meet on the street. Uh, well, what, they, what has happened is their brain has stopped receiving new signals. Or to the extent that new signals do get in, they all have to be edited to fit into the belief system. Now, I've shown you, you can't say all about anything, you can't say all about the universe, you can't know all about this room, you can't know all about this, and if we think we know ourselves, what you really are is totally unknown, and by definition, infinite, because you can't experience all of it at one time, and you can never know it all at one time. Every day you can find new aspects to yourself if you allow yourself to change. And the best way to allow yourself to change and grow is to realize how little you know and pay more attention to what's going on around you. Three years ago, I couldn't get off the couch. A few months ago, I could walk three paces. I will now walk the whole length of the apartment without falling down, I hope. If I fall down, how much will you cut it and free shoot it? I want the audience to see the truth of what optimism can do. Hooray for the optimist! The end. You know, like that, no, this is followed by the walk.